Uh, I've known William for 30 years. Uh, I met him on the fire department. Um, great guy. Um, saw both his kids, you know, when they were, you know, little in diapers. Um, was over there quite a, quite often. Um, we went fishing together, um, hunted, uh, worked together. Um, he's just a fun guy, fun to be around. Um, great father, great husband, and you know, good fireman. I met. Uh, we called him Whiskey Bill, and that's how I was introduced to him as I'm Whiskey Bill. And I met him. He was a firefighter uh, at twenty at twenty station, station twenty. 20. Uh, when I was a vacation relief, and then I became an arson investigator, and he worked at alarm office and was my eye in the sky. Well, as far as his family, I mean, he was the the rock. I mean, his kids loved him, his wife loved him. I mean, he was the, you know, he was their rock, the leader. And I knew Bill from, again, being my eye in the sky. As an arson investigator, we had one arson investigator on duty. 24 hours at a time, and I would be out in, a, in an area that I was not supposed to be out in at that time of night by myself, uh, investigating fires, tracking down arsonists, uh, running down leads, going to car fires, uh, what's not, uh, collecting evidence. And sometimes I was there by myself. I'd turn the fire companies loose, and I would be on scene by myself, just me and my little pistola. And uh, obviously Bill knew I wasn't a very good shot because he would always check with me on the air and say, Marshal 99, are you okay? Just checking on you. I haven't heard from you in a while, just checking on you. And about every 30 minutes I'd get that, Marshal 99, are you okay? Just checking on you. And very few dispatchers at our alarm office did that. And it was, it was comforting to know that someone was actually paying attention to me out there at three, four, two o'clock in the morning when I was up there by myself. And it, it was a comfort to me, and it was also a comfort, I think, to my family. Uh, he genuinely cared. And it wasn't just a job to him, it was a, uh, he just really cared, you know, and, and it, that was important to me. Sure. True friend, true brother. True friend, true brother. And he, he genuinely cared. I mean, it wasn't just a job. And some guys go down to the alarm office, and Paul can attest to this, and, and uh, because they're forced to or they're forced to because of injuries, as he was, uh, or they're, they're just looking for to get off the fire truck. And Bill took that as a true calling, and he was there to – give us the information we needed, protect us, and help, and also help, I mean, I didn't listen to his calls when he was talking to the public, but I knew that there was only one other dispatcher that would check on me, but he wasn't as diligent as Bill was. And I, and I don't think it was because it was me, I think it was every investigator that was on duty, that 24 hour shift, that he genuinely cared and was out for our welfare and our safety. And that, and that meant a lot to me. Bill would, uh, he, he was just a, everybody that met him liked him. And he was the guy that, he, if, you, if he met you, and it says in his bio I read, that he automatically considered you a friend. And if Bill considered you a friend, you were a friend for life. Now he might give you a hard time, and he might make fun of you like all firemen do, but you could genuinely pick up the phone and call Bill and say, Bill, I need this, and Bill would, Bill would respond. And so that, I mean, and, and for somebody who's not a lifelong friend like Paul was, that, that does mean a lot. And it's somebody, he's somebody you could count on. That was the type of character Bill was. I mean, the character he had. Um, he worked, he was diligent as a firefighter when he was on the truck. No, when he could no longer do that, he took this job seriously. And I worked at the dispatch office as well. Um, it's a very serious job. You have a lot of responsibility. And once again, he took that serious. And even when his health was um, failing, he still did his job, and that's just the type of guy he, he was. And as far as stories, I mean, like I said, he was the life of the party. He was a character. Um, he'd give you a hard time. We kind of bantered back and forth, and, and I, I miss that to this day. I mean, um, uh, if you've been around firemen enough, you know how we are. It's, um, 
it's just what it is. And uh, but he he was he's just a solid guy. You needed him. He was there, and wish he could be here today. I used to make comments. I said, you know, you can't go anywhere with that whiskey bill tracking you, because he'd watch you on the dispatch screen, and he would, you know, I, one time I was circling because we didn't have GPS, and I was looking at a map go, and. Uh, Bill comes over the air on the radio and says, uh, Marshall 99, which is our call number. He said, uh, you need, you look like you need help. And he had watched me. They were watching me in alarm office just circle the fire. And another street had street signs. I could smell the fire. I just had the windows rolled down, but I just couldn't get to it. And he said, okay, go to the next street, make a right, go to the next street, make a left. And he goes, then you ought to be able to see a fire truck. And I was like, thank you. He goes, but we are laughing at you. I said, I know. <laughs> So that was, you know, early in the early in the morning. Well, he was solid. Um, similar to, I mean, he was just a solid guy you could go to and count on him. And to me, that's important, especially in our line of work. Um, but also outside of work. I mean, he was just more than a coworker. I mean, he's one of my closest friends, and he was just he was there when you needed him.